in the Realms of Mediumship by Chico Francisco Candido Javier and inspired by the spirit Andre Luiz. Chapter 18 Side Notes Donna Ambrosina continued to psychograph several messages addressed to the attendees. One of the speakers, under the influence of a benign spirit benefactor, was emphasizing the need to conform to the divine laws in order to restructure our mental life, thereby meriting renewing blessings. Some of the incarnates remained lethargic and impermeable, vampirized by the capricious, obsessing spirits that followed them closely. However, Several discarnates of average understanding were listening attentively and sincerely to the consoling teaching. Gabriel presided firmly over everything with his lucid and penetrating eyes. Nothing, no matter how small, escaped his perception. Here, at his slightest gesture, mocking spirits were encouraged to renew their attitude. There, sick patients were aided after his silent nod of recommendation. His strong and sure pulse of command upheld the harmony and order of the whole endeavor. We contemplated the large table where supervision unfolded with irreprehensible equilibrium. Observing the busy medium surrounded by what she needed for her work, Alerio asked Aulus, Why are there so many personal messages from the kind spirits? They are comforting responses for those who ask for their assistance and consolation. And these responses? Do they offer cut and dry solutions to their problems? No, there's always a gap between help and solution in any difficulty, and we mustn't forget that each one of us has his or her own enigmas. If that's the case, why the communications? If the Scarnets cannot offer a peaceable conclusion to the torments of their incarnate brothers and sisters, why is the door open between them and us? Don't forget the need for cooperation on each person's pathway, replied Aulus gravely. As far as eternal life is concerned, life in the physical body no matter how long, is always a short learning experience, and we must also bear in mind that the earth is the area where we wage our evolutionary battle. Amid the principles of cause and effect, we acquire the qualities of experience with which we structure our personality for the higher realms. Actually, the mind is the traveler seeking the goal of the angelic state, but it cannot proceed without help. No one lives alone. The so-called dead must help incarnate brothers and sisters during their stage in dense matter because they themselves will in turn be compelled to new immersions in the corporeal experience. It is the law that wisdom rescues ignorance and that the more evolved aid those who are less so. By cooperating with enlightened and benevolent spirits, incarnates attract invaluable help for their lives in the spirit world, and the friends who assist incarnates are building resources for tomorrow when they will return to the terrestrial struggle. Yes, yes, I see, said Elerio gratefully. However, putting myself in the position of normal people, I recall that, in the world, we normally hope for a decisive and absolute solution from heaven to solve our innumerable problems. That attitude, emphasized the assistant, derives from an old mental vice. To understand the matter better, Let's remember the Divine Master's exemplary life. Jesus, the spiritual governor of the world, aided the sick and the afflicted without exempting them from their fundamental problems. Zacchaeus, the wealthy man blessed by the Master's visit, felt constrained to change his conduct. Mary Magdalene, who received the Master's loving consideration, was not freed from the arduous battle for inner renewal. Lazarus, raised from the darkness of the tomb, was not exonerated from having to accept the challenge of death later on. Paul of Tarsus was singled out by a personal appeal at the gates of Damascus, yet the apostle did not get a dispensation from the sacrifices inherent to his new mission. As we know, it would be illogical to expect discarnates to be free from all human struggles. That would imply stealing the work that sustains the worker or withholding the lesson from the student in need of enlightenment. Nearby, a kindly woman was thinking to herself, My son, my son, if you're not dead, please visit me. Come, come, I'm dying from missing you. Say something that both of us can understand. If all is not over, approach the medium and communicate. It's impossible that you could have no pity. Her bitter words, although unarticulated, reached our ears as it flung into the air in a muted voice. 
a slight noise behind us got our attention. A discarnate young man appeared in a deplorable condition and approached the broken-hearted woman, dominated by an invincible attraction. From his curled lips poured all his anguish in the form of emotional words. Mother! Mother! He cried out on his knees like a tormented child, leaning into her lap. Please don't forsake me. I'm here. Listen to me. I'm not dead. Forgive me. Forgive me. I'm a rebel. A castaway. I sought death when I should have lived for your love. I now know firsthand what suffering is, and I wish I could die for good. So great is the shame that afflicts my heart. Of course the poor woman couldn't see the agonized figure, but she felt his presence through an indescribable anxiety oppressing her chest. Two caretakers approached and took the young man from his mother's lap. Following the assistant, as he rushed to help the tearful woman, we heard her clamor mentally. Wouldn't it be better to follow him? To die and rest? My son. I want my son. Aula supplied magnetic passes, after which the poor woman felt great relief. Then, he told us, Let's review the case of this poor misguided mother. Her son committed suicide a few months ago, and she hasn't been able to calm her inner torment. In her loving devotion, she pleads for him to communicate. But she doesn't realize what she's asking for because the young man's shocking situation would cause her dreadful suffering. For that reason, she cannot receive his words directly. However, by being in contact with the spiritual work carried out here, she will acquire new energies to gradually recover. Of course, added Ilario intelligently, she will not have resolved the problem of her wounded sentiments, but she will acquire enough strength to get better. That's right. Moreover, I considered in turn, mediumship nowadays is essentially the same as prophecy in the religions of the past. Yes, agreed Alice attentively, with the difference that mediumship nowadays is a gift from the Lord to humankind in general, considering the maturity of humankind's understanding of life. The mediumistic phenomenon is not new. Only the way it manifests is new, because the priesthood of various creeds has been stagnated for many centuries in the displays of outward worship, unduly mummifying the body of the heavenly revelations. Most notably, Christianity, which should be the largest and simplest of the schools of faith, has long been crystallized in the superficiality of its churches. Thus, it was necessary to free its principles for the benefit of the world, which nowadays, from a scientific point of view, is bathed in the light of a new era. That is why the planet's unseen government decided that mediumship should be brought from the clergy into the public square so that the notion of eternity, through the survival of the soul, would awaken the anesthetized mind of the populace. That is how Jesus is reappearing to us now, not as a founder of rituals and dogmatic boundaries, but in his true nature as the redeemer of the human soul. The instrument of God par excellence, he utilized mediumship to light up his doctrine of love. In healing the sick and pacifying the afflicted, he often came in contact with the so-called dead, some of whom were nothing but suffering souls, vampirizing the obsessed of many kinds. Besides talking with Moses materialized on Mount Tabor, he himself is the great resurrected one, bequeathing humankind the empty tomb and accompanying his disciples with unblemished love so that they could continue their apostleship of blessings. Ilario smiled like a student satisfied with a lesson and said, Ah, yes, I think I'm starting to get it. The work of the meeting was coming to a close. Alice sensed that Gabriel was about to write a closing message and respectfully asked him to address a few concepts regarding mediumship, to which the supervisor kindly acquiesced. Donna Ambrosina had paused briefly to recuperate. The meeting's director asked for silence in order to end the night's work, and as soon as the group reverently quieted down, Gabriel took control of the medium's mind, and holding her arm, wrote speedily. In just a few minutes, his message was finished. The medium stood and read it aloud. Dear friends, you must not seek in mediumship the false key to certain inappropriate arrangements, but rather the right pathway for our adjustment to the greater life. In grasping this truth, we need to renew our concepts concerning mediums, so that we do not make our fellow brothers and sisters oracles and fortune-tellers, 
thus forgetting the duties of our own spiritual growth. Symbolically, Spiritism is Jesus returning to the world, inviting us to individual growth through constructive and incessant work. According to the laws of cooperation, it is right to accept the loving hand offered to us for the journey of salvation, but we mustn't forget that each of us bears core problems and non-transferable needs. Whether incarnate or discarnate, we all walk a wide field of experiences and trials that are in harmony with the imperatives of our growth toward immortality. Therefore, let's neither attribute to mediums obligations that are our own, nor expect miraculous functions from mediumship. We ourselves are responsible for the arduous effort of our own ascension with regard to the responsibilities that our higher understanding imposes on us. In light of our assertions, you may ask, in keeping with the old habits that characterize our mental laziness on earth, if spiritism and mediumship do not resolve life's enigmas completely, what are they doing in the religious sanctuary of humankind? We will reply that in spiritism and mediumship, we can rediscover the pure thought of Christ, helping us comprehend for a broader discernment of reality. In them, we find precise information regarding the law of compensation, explaining afflictive problems of the soul, destiny, and suffering enabling us to perceive somehow the infinite dimensions toward which we are evolving. And above all, we owe to them the light to overcome the dark labyrinths of death in order to finally connect with the true notions of cosmic consciousness. Once such formulas of reasoning are attained, we will ask you in turn, Do you think it insignificant to reveal the greatness of justice? Do you believe it to be of no consequence? to unveil life in its limitless facets of evolution and eternity? So, let us revere spiritism and mediumship as two living altars in the temple of faith, on which we can contemplate the sphere of earthly cogitations from a higher perspective, and finally understand that the glory reserved for the human spirit is sublime and infinite in the divine kingdom of the universe. The psychographed communication addressed other matters, and after its reading, a brief prayer of acknowledgement followed. While the assistants returned to their conversations, Ilario and I entered a deep introspection to better learn and meditate in light of the concepts we had heard.